Welcome back. In the last topic, you understood the different types of variables and the different data types. Now, what we are going to learn in today's topic is we are going to understand how we can cast different data types. What do you mean by casting? Casting is nothing but you are going to change the type of the data that you are storing in a variable. If it is an integer, can I convert it to float? If it is a float, can I convert it to integer? Like this, I can change different data types depending on my business needs. So there are two types of casting. Let's understand that. If you look at it, casting is all about changing the data types, isn't it? And I told you this Python has a beautiful feature where we say that the type can be casted internally without we explicitly calling it out. There is Python itself would recognize the change in the data type and it would update accordingly because the compilers are so smart. Now look at this. This is what we call it as implicit type casting. This happens automatically with Python to avoid any data loss. For example, if I say I want to add an integer number and a float number and then I would like to store it in a new variable. I can very well do it like 3 plus 5.5 would result in 8.5. Now this 8.5 is a float. Now if you are storing it in a new variable, even though you may declare it as integer, it can still store the float value and it will be updated to float as the data type. This is what we call it as implicit type casting. Python does it consciously to ensure that the data that you have stored in these variables are not lost. Addition of an integer and float is completely done in this way. It's just one example. You can write different data types and Python is smart enough to do this. Now moving on, there is a second type of casting, what we call it as the explicit data type casting, where we say that I can create functions or I can use functions to change one data type to the other by explicitly calling it out. So I can convert int of x, that is I say that integer is a function and I'm passing x as a variable to it and that will convert x into an integer irrespective of what that data type is. Same way if I use strx, string is the function I'm using and I'm passing x as a data to it variable to it and I'm able to convert x into a string representation. Similarly, the float and the bool, the other data types that we studied in the last topic, we can use them to convert the values to float or boolean data type. Same way, we have certain other variables also. Like we discussed in the last topic, there are boolean data types and we also have binary data types like that we have x and oct. These are some of the functions that you can use to convert integer to hexadecimal or octadecimal numbers respectively. Now let's look at some examples for you to understand before we move on to answer. Take this uh, simple assignment is c equal to 11001. Is it a string or is it an hexa? What do you think? It's a string isn't it since we are putting it in quotation. Now I am converting it to the integer. I am saying c equal to int s comma 2. Now when I print this, like after converting to integer base, what is the value that I am going to get? Let's check that out. I am printing c. Can you guess before I show the results? After converting to integer base, the value comes out as 25. That is the value C stores the value 25. So you can see the output on the right side. Same way, I have a complex data type. I say 1 comma 2. Now let's look at the second example. The variable C has complex 1 comma 2 passed across to it. It means that I have some data 1 comma 2 which I want to convert it to complex variables. Now when I print C, what do you think the output will be? 1 plus 2j. Normal two set of integers are converted to complex data type here just by passing it to complex function. 
Same way, let me use x. H E X as a function when I use it and I pass 66 as a data to it. What do you think the output will be? The output will be 0 X 42. And it's a float. What you can say float of 11011. That's what has happened here. Same way, if I use octadecimal as a function and I pass 65 as data to it, I get the output 0, O, if you notice the difference, x was used as a symbol for xa in the previous function. Here it's octa, so I'm using o. So 0, o, 1, 0, 1 is the output I'm getting here. I hope you have understood what data type casting is all about. So what we have discussed so far is two types of casting, internal type casting or implicit type casting we call it as. And then we have explicit type casting. Now it is time for us to try this hands-on in Python directly. Are you ready?